what I have here <coughs> these are my green bars and they have gook on them from where I had put tape on it I'm just using a, a household cleaner and I'm just rubbing the goop off. I've already vacuumed out my machine and the vacuuming wasn't quite enough so I used this brush to get the rest out and the corner still had issues so believe it or not this is a um, transfer pencil I used the end of it it's a little plastic brush couldn't find my hard brush and I'm just cleaning each one of these up and to clean out the um, I took my machine apart because um, I had taken it apart before so I did not have those clips you do not have to take it all the way apart I chose to and I'm going to reconstruct, I've already got one constructed as a mini bond which is four sections that way I can do mittens or something small on it because it has about um, 40 stitches on it and just work on getting it clean and in my case I have a lot of tape I had to t get off and I'm just using a little bit I probably should go get a scrubby like a green pad and that would probably make this a lot easier but I've been wanting to do this for a lot for a long time so so tonight's not a knitting night tonight's a maintenance night you let these dry and then you do pretty much the same thing. Now with this one I sprayed the cleaner onto the green but I'm not going to spray the my needles that way. I'll just spray the cloth and then use the cloth to clean up the needles because as you're using the needles little bits of fiber gets caught in the nub of the needle and it helps I mean, once you clean it, just wipe that. It just wipes off. It's not looks nasty, but it comes off fairly quick. And you just rub these down and try to get all the tape off. Sometimes you have to use the tip of your finger. That's if you put tape on it. If you didn't put tape on it, your project won't be so won't be as bad. But I promise you, tape's not going to go back on. Well, I can't promise that. <laughs> it depends on the pattern I'm doing as to whether I need it. If I can figure out a better way, I'll do it. But if I can't, I'll get some tape. I just won't leave it on there so long. Because then the glue won't have a chance to set up. Okay. Oh, here's another one. Yeah, I used masking. I've used uh, scotch tape, take paper down on it. It's pretty much what I'm taking off now. And I've used masking tape and written on it. I think it's almost easier if I mark it up with a magic marker and then use this cleaner to um, clean it off. Now I want to show you what I use for my trim. Oh, okay. That's all done. Um, the yarn I use, it is, let me see if I can grab it. Here's the skein. That's the yarn I'm using. Okay. It works very well. All right, and now for the needles, I'm not going to do every one of these on camera because that would be annoying on your part, and I don't want to annoy you. 
what I do is I take my cloth, I pick up a needle, and I just rub the tip. Just work it back and forth. Do your best not to bend it. I don't know if you can see the gookie. It's kind of gooky on the end. Some are worse than others because some needles, believe it or not, probably don't might not get used. But just clean each one and I will be back. Oh, I want to show you how I brushed it, the other one. I have not wiped down the other portions. Now each each section, if you do take it all the way apart, okay, each section is 15 slots, okay? And what I do, I just take a stiff brush. I wish it was a little smaller, but it's all I have. And you just brush it like that. Can you see all the yucks? And then brush it and down like this. See, that's just one brushing from my machine. And I have vacuumed this out. See, that is really nasty. And I have vacuumed it out. And I'm just rubbing it with a stiff brush. One of those like nail brushes would work really good, or a stiff toothbrush. Now, if you get a stubborn spot, I take this, and this is just a plastic at this end, okay, and I fit it into it, and I just run it up and down it, and if you hold it at a slight angle, you can see, like, bumps in it, and that's what I'm going after, just working it down, just taking my time. See? And no, I'm not saving my dust. I'm gonna I'm putting it into a pile to throw it all the way afterwards. Just work it down. Found this one works the best for it. The big one gets the bulk of it off, and this gets the little corners that don't want to cooperate. Now when you can do that and nothing comes out, you should be about done. Uh, just run it along the lengthwise. That's where the the foam will be setting. Now if you if you brush it back and forth like that, it puts them back into to shape. But I don't use it in sewing, so I will get some use out of it. And just run it up and down. <coughs> Excuse me. Now once I get these done, I'm going to use the cloth and clean up the edges. Now I'll use my fingernail to remove the label. All these labels are are numbers. Now these will go back on it because I do like having my needles numbered. This this black stuff you're seeing, what that is, is I had some rub on numbers. I was not impressed with them. This red, that is a magic marker mark. And how I do it, I'm holding the bed down fairly tight. And I'm using a vinyl eraser, just a white vinyl eraser. And I'm just erasing that spot. Vinyl eraser will get permanent marker off. Works very well. Believe it or not, it's one of the few things I remembered from college. My teacher had written on a wipe off board with magic marker. And I spent the next day with a white eraser, got it all off for him.
and it gets off quite a bit of stuff. And you can still use the eraser, it just uses a lot of it to get it off. And once you get that, you do a little brush again. Okay, and then I'll take my cloth. I don't add any more of that cleaning stuff to the cloth. I just use it. It's just a little slightly damp. And then wipe it all down. And then take a look at it if you still see some goop, which I do. I run the tip back and forth like that. And that kind of straightens it out a little bit. And just run it down. Got a toothbrush, one of those heavy, hard toothbrushes. That would work well too. Okay. And just do that for each one of your sections. And I'll be back when I get my needles all cleaned up, which I have about 200 of them to do. And I've got one whole bond, which is eight sections. Well, actually, it's I'm supposed to have two and a half sections, but I've only got two, or two and a half bond, but I've only got two bonds, so i got to figure out what I did with my other eight pieces. Or, excuse me, my other four pieces. Because the extension is four sections. Ouch. Each section is 15 slots. So that's 15 needles. Okay, that was pretty good. And I'm pushing fairly hard on the... Yeah, dusty. Yuck. When I get done, I'm going to clean off my table and clean it up. I'm just going to need it. Okay. And I'm just alternating and stack them so they stack up straight. Okay, I've got some more labels to get rid of. This one's really... Mm. But it's since 06, it's almost six years of use, and I've used it almost every day. I was not impressed with the rub on numbers. But I do like using the number I using Corel Draw. I printed up some numbers that are eight millimeters in width and I run it across the top. And what I did with that one is I went from one until however many needles I had. Hmm. 
spoon, okay? And just take the cloth and wipe it down a little bit. Okay. All right, I'll be back. I'll be back when all my needles are wiped down, which is all those. I got all my green things wiped down, so that's a good. So I'm going to put them in a little container so I don't do something wrong with them, like drop them. Okay. So those are all set and set aside. Let me get that while I'm thinking. Okay. Okay. So I'll get all these cleaned up. All these cleaned up, which I've got four, five, six, seven left to go. And I'll be back at that point.